Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm always asking you over my Instagram, what brands are people not buying, aren't they using anymore? So I'm gonna dive into one of those today that was heavily suggested and I totally agree with. Today we are discussing how and why one of the most once beloved beauty brands, Lime Crime, lost its, let's say, unicorn sparkles <laughs> to a point where even a complete brand redo and even changing up its CEO might not be able to help fix its soiled, heavily soiled reputation. There are, in my opinion, multiple reasons um, people no longer use this brand and for good reasons too. So to understand those reasons, let's take a very quick trip down memory lane. Just before we get into that today, if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube. Also in real life, it's my goal to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, do please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up and if you like it, I'll make more videos like this. Lime crime. Hmm. From questionable product quality and inconsistent customer service, which is never a good thing, and many controversies that just kind of left us feeling uneasy about the brand, untrustworthy, and in general, just generally grossed out, to be honest, to say the least. It's extremely hard not to notice the kind of dramatic shift in Lime Crime's reputation from when they started out to in the middle to now. It's a story, it has a beginning, middle, end. Lime Crime kind of burst onto the makeup scene with vibrant colors, formulas. It captured the interest of makeup enthusiasts worldwide, myself included. Loved it. I thought, wow, this is, this is, yes. From their lipsticks, their eyeshadows, they definitely carved a niche for themselves. As kind of like the lead in, I guess, unconventional, alternative beauty. I guess you could say. It was, a, it was a different time. This brand was kind of wild back then, you know? And their kind of like approach to cosmetics and making it this very particular kind of brand got everyone really excited and kind of want, made us want to experiment with color a little bit more, especially lip colors. And as they stated, it was a brand to kind of help you unleash your inner unicorn. Now, <laughs> My inner unicorn has black hair and hates glitters and rainbows, so maybe the brand wasn't for me, but I liked it at that time. The brand was founded by Dodeer and her husband, Mark, in 2008. The brand very quickly became extremely popular, mainly for, like, the extremely unique aesthetic. aesthetic and the bold colors they had, as I said, in their lipsticks and their eyeshadow palettes. Now, Dodeer is one of the huge reasons for this brand, in my opinion, allegedly, taking such a nosedive. So Do Deer is, I don't, that's not her real name, obviously, but she's originally from Russia. She moved to the States. So she began actually selling clothes on eBay, like clothes she made herself. And that was also under the name Lime Crime. Now, allegedly Lime, Lime Crime, the name, I never thought about it, but apparently it comes from her favorite color, Lime, and like criminals. No, <laughs> it was like from breaking the rules of you know, like traditional clothing and makeup crime, Lime Crime. So mine would be like black winter. Ooh. So all the success she had from eBay selling her clothes online and people being like, oh my God, they're so crazy clothes, gave her the confidence to kind of like start her own makeup brand. This is something that didn't really happen back then. Like back in the day, we didn't have all these indie brands popping up. It was online only and it started with a very small collection of lip products, highly pigmented, vegan and cruelty free. And from then on, it kind of spiraled. It really gained like a cult following, you know, like movies, like, you know, Beetlejuice, <laughs> that gain like a very specific type of audience, a very specific kind of following. It was that kind of movement, you know, that kind of like gathering all these fans. And it was mainly among like, you know, makeup artists, young makeup enthusiasts, alternative subcultures, pastel goths, um, who else? Emos, I was emo then, wait, was I? But looking at the other makeup options we had, especially where I was from, we had what, Clinique, Estee Lauder, Benefit. It was very, you know, like this, if a brand was like, a person, it would be like that. That's all the options we had. So seeing all those colors online, that packaging was insane. Even me and my friends, you know, we were going through like these emo phases still. I think, I can't remember, I swear we were. So this brand looked so incredibly intriguing to us. And it was these bold shades. It had blue lipstick, green lipstick. Where were you gonna see those kind of colors, apart from theatrical brands, in 2008, you know? 
scandalous. This was like a new brand. Expression through makeup wasn't so much of a thing back then. So this brand was, was like, yes. So one of their standout products was of course, the Velveteen lipsticks. Velveteen? They were basically a liquid lipstick, really comfortable on the lip, really soft and smooth, and really long lasting. And in like, crazy colors back then. I remember I got a set and it had like this pumpkin yellowy shade. I literally never used it. I think I just opened it and sniffed it occasionally. It wasn't in my kit. It wasn't, I wasn't doing YouTube back then. I don't know why I had it. I just wanted to own a Lime Crime Velveteen. Like it was just like the thing to do. And also, and also the Unicorn theme collection, which is kind of still on the brand at the moment. We'll touch on that later as well. But unicorns were definitely a kind of thing for them. <laughs> but something happened along the way. A few things happened along the way. And it's kind of no secret that Lime Crime have had their fair share of controversies. The brand really experienced this period, this rocky road that kind of left us thinking, do we trust them and are they worth still us giving them our money, basically. Doe Deer has a horrible, horrible, disgusting history filled with controversies, allegedly. And I could sit here and list them off, but what I'm gonna do is leave some links to some videos down below that um, explain it a lot more and they have intensively looked into it. And I think they need the correct research. Go and check them out. Doe Deer gives off very much, I paid for a blue tick on Twitter. So now everyone has to read my racist, homophobic bullshit kind of person energy. You know what I mean? One of the biggest controversies with them was their huge, huge security breach. Now, a lot of their customers' personal information was compromised. Whatever their customers' information they used to purchase products on their website was compromised completely. And bear in mind, this started in 2014, Line Crime only spoke about it publicly on their Instagram and let their customers know in 2015. Now, unless it was December the 31st, and then they let their customers know January the 1st, I feel like that's a lot of time to not let people know that their personal details and bank accounts could be in danger. And of course that led to a lot of criticism and a huge loss in trust from customers. What's to say it's not gonna happen again? What's to say they're improving stuff, their systems? I don't know how it works. I don't know how people hack the mainframe. And Line Crime did claim to up their security, fix these issues, and pretty much hoped it will rebuild trust with their customer base or what was left of it, <laughs> I assume. The brand definitely started to fizzle out because it was taken over. Basically in 2018, it was taken over. It was sold to a company called 10 Gram. 10 Gram? Yes. Capital Partners. I don't know why 10 Gram shocked me. I don't know what that means. And this was a private equity firm focused on consumer and retail brands. Their goal was to basically expand Lime Crime's reach. So maybe, I guess, like make it put in more stores, maybe like sell it on like ASOS. I don't know. <laughs> Is it on ASOS? But also like staying true to what the company was meant to be, like that unique image they had, which was now racist thieves. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> so where we are now with this brand, a former CEO of a body shop, which quite different if you ask me, is now CEO of Lime Crime. Doe Deer has stepped down completely, allegedly. And although for a lot of people, Doe Deer being involved in Lime Crime was a huge no-go for them because of the, the racism and all the horrible things that she did in her past, I think the brand were kind of like, oh, you know what? Now she's stepped down and now she's completely out of the question. Like what a great fresh start for us as a company. We can take this name that's already established bad background, but now it doesn't matter because she's not involved. I think the trust is lost and understandably so. After all the drama and that big data breach, people don't trust the brand. And I can see why they don't quite believe that they aren't putting money into Doe Deer's pockets if they continue to buy Lime Crime even now. And even looking at the latest trust pilot reviews of Lime Crime, it seems like some distrust is still warranted. Here's my personal view. <laughs> <laughs> like I haven't sprinkled that in throughout. As a long time makeup artist, beauty enthusiast, an avid consumer, and especially as somebody who just likes to buy products when they have incredible packaging, I'm a packaging person. I remember Lime Crime being a brand I strive to own one day. Like I was, I remember being like, one day I'm gonna have one of those palettes. They were kind of pricey back then for makeup. I'm gonna have a lipstick and I did eventually 
end up owning some, as I said. I loved a unique style, the unique shades. Would I have ever used a blue lipstick in my life? Absolutely not. Did I want to own one? Yes, I did so I can open it and sniff it. However, I think what's happened to this brand is a big, big example of people expressing their feelings for brands with their wallets, with their money. Like I always say, we're in this place in time at a moment where people see brands as people. If that brand was a person, would you hang out with them? Would they be your friend? Would they be that annoying person that you just don't want, but is always there? Do you like their morals? Do you like who they are as a person? And once you lose trust in a person, once you see a dark side of them, once they post their horrible, horrible Facebook status during lockdown, you lose trust in them. You don't want to see them again. You block them, you unfriend them. And then they're always that person in your mind. And that's the same with brands. They've definitely changed it up a little bit, but brand seems to be leaning really into hair products, hair care and hair color to a point where if you type in Lime Crime and it comes up on their homepage, the first thing you see or the first category of products is hair care, is hair color. Personal opinion. Some of these, packagings give off white label i'm not saying it is just personal opinion it looks it looks like it could be next to like the at home brow lamination kits on amazon you know what i mean and the packaging and the brand all together do kind of have a more of a drugstore vibe now which is it's not bad we all have a we all have a drugstore product we all have a bargain their prices don't necessarily reflect drugstore and I know they have tried to decrease their products prices. I don't think they necessarily claim to be drugstore or high end but they do kind of need to meet themselves in the middle and establish some sort of like identity there because their prices give leaning towards high end yet the look of their products give drugstore. They also had wax melts on their website which I thought was really weird. <laughs> I personally don't see Lime Crime ever achieving that kind of like cult status they used to, that popularity among people who love makeup, who love creating looks, you know, who love creating um, artistic things. There's so many other brands to choose from with less problematic past, although let's be real, most brands have problematic past in some way or another. And in this kind of like world where anyone can make their own brand, this unique idea that Lime Crime once was doesn't necessarily seem so unique anymore. It, it seems like, okay, What's next? And to be honest, I'm kind of surprised they're still around. The reason why people aren't buying Lime Crime anymore is because the name is tainted. People don't trust that the former CEO, Dodeer, is actually making royalties from the brand in any way, despite claims that she is no longer involved in the brand. Whether it be true or not, the trust is gone. And it's something you can't really get back. Why should people trust you or try and retrust you again when there's so many other products to choose from and so many other indie brands on the market that we can buy and celebrate and support small businesses. I would love to know your opinion on where you think Lime Crime will be, let's say in five years time. Will they still be selling hair dye and wax melts? Thank you so much for joining me. Do consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.